This is going to be kind of an open discussion tonight, um, but of course we wanted to start off with our top three derby picks and just talk about some long shots we may have. So Travis, we'll start off with you. Top three. Have you uh, it down? Yeah, my top three would be Justify first. Um, I just think he he has the looks of a horse that's close to American Pharaoh in terms of the way he moves and talent. Um, I get that there's some questions. He wasn't hurt by the draw today. Um, I th and I think if he runs his race, they are all running for second. Uh, my second pick would be Audible. I just think he's just a good horse. I think he's coming into the race the right way. Uh, he's, he can sort of sit close to the pace and come from off the pace. I think he's got a lot of talent. And I think he's, of all the Pletchers, I think he's the one that is probably most likely to run his race. And my third pick, I was torn between Good Magic, but I'm going to go with Bolt Doro, just because I think Bolt Doro is going to get forgotten in the wagering, and he doesn't deserve to be forgotten. He's going to, he's always been second fiddle to Justify and or McKenzie over the spring, and he's, he's one win away from being the second choice in a, in a clear-cut manner. Um, so I'm going to take him third, uh, which obviously leaves out a lot of really good horses, but that's what type of derby it is. Um, I was there, were only, there was only one post draw today I thought really hurt somebody, and that was Noble Indy. I thought Noble Indy was a live long shot. It's going to be really hard for him to work out the trip he would need to overcome what I perceive to be a little bit of a speed figure um, deficit relative to the others. I thought he could maybe do it if he was going to tuck inside and sit that first flight trip, but mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'd still probably put him as a bit of a live long shot, but my enthusiasm waned a little bit. So I can justify Audible and uh, both throw him in my top three, and then maybe Noble Indy and We'll talk about some others. Okay, yeah, definitely interested in kind of getting that in-depth discussion, which we'll get into momentarily, and we'll also talk about some wagering strategies, um, perhaps throwing in some long shots as well um, to beef up those exotics, but I think it's going to be a very difficult year to throw in some long shots just because it is just so deep of a race, but again, we'll get into that momentarily. My top three, I won't elaborate too much as I am the host, and we want... <laughs> to get into your all's opinion. Um, but I'm going top three, Vino Rosso, Mendelssohn, and Justify. Um, Vino Rosso, the Derby is not the day to jump off of this horse's bandwagon. Um, I have liked him for the past several starts. He obviously was very disappointing down in Tampa Bay. Um, Todd, Johnny Velasquez, the camp pretty much saying that he didn't necessarily handle the course. Um, he came back to obviously have that sustained run in the Wood Memorial, which I think is an excellent attribute um, given the pace dynamics in the Kentucky Derby. So I'm sticking with him, kind of disagreeing with Travis in that I think Vino Rosso is one of the more likeliest winners of the Todd Fletcher um, group. And obviously post position will come into play. He does draw from the outside post, um, post 18. I'm not, I don't think it's going to be too detrimental to him considering his running style. Um, so that's going to be a top pick. Mendelssohn, you know, he could be a fantastic horse or he could not translate his form here from Dubai. I mean, it's, and I'm interested to get that discussion a little bit later today. And of course, I think justifies the horse to beat him. He's probably the most, arguably the t most talented horse um, coming into the Kentucky Derby. Um, and Bob Baffert, we trust. I mean, there's a lot of obvious reasons to like Justify. I think you kind of have to make, uh, it, it's harder to make cases to go against Justify than it is to promote him. So um, top three for me, we'll talk about my long shot a little bit later. But next up, Ed, top three and maybe a long shot for you. Yeah, well, my top pick is Audible, uh, Florida Derby winner for Todd Fletcher. So uh, riding the always dreaming magic another year. Uh, Justify came along and ended up sort of usurping what I thought was the best prep to date in the Florida Derby. Uh, but that number that he got on Brisnet stacks up with anybody other than Justify Santa Anita Derby. And I have some reasons to think that maybe Audible is better poised than Justify to take that next step forward. Some pedigree concerns, which if we talk pedigree, we can get more into later. But I don't really think there's a perfect pedigree of anyone in the group of the top contenders. So. I'm not gonna let it bother me too much, and that family has done well at a mile and a quarter, uh, even as the sire might have some questions into mischief. So Audible on top for me, and I love the Florida Derby a lot, so I'm running back the exact at Hofburg in second. Uh, I know a lot of people are nervous, for lack of a better term, about him being the wise guy horse or whatever that means, but he's 20 to one on the morning line. He's still 30 plus to one in some Vegas books, so I think the price is gonna be there. If I like Audible, no reason not to like him. And maybe he is one that the mile and a quarter 
helps him take a step forward in his fourth start. And I do have Mendelssohn third. For me, if you're going to take a chance on greatness in this race, uh, Mendelssohn's the one I would prefer at twice the price of Justify. Travis had a great stat on Twitter of uh, horses coming out of their respective Breeders' Cup races. Obviously, Mendelssohn on turf. Hard to ignore, though, that he beat a quality group. Not that the juvenile wasn't, but he shipped over here and won. He shipped to Dubai and won. I happen to think Aiden O'Brien's the greatest trainer in the world. It'd be a lot of fun to see him win an American Classic. He's the one for me of the top two choices that I like better than both by Scat Daddy, which is interesting. So, Audible, Hoffberg, Mendelssohn. All right. Now, last time that I talked to Dan, I asked him if he had a top three. He proceeded to give me a top 12. So... <laughs> Have you made any adjustments lately? Or narrowed, are we going to sit here all night and talk about your top eight? I've narrowed it down <laughs> slightly. I will say before I start, I, I think this is this is the time of the year where we theorize, right? We're trying to pace project, trying to do all this other stuff. My early theory is that he actually doesn't like Hoffberg at all. He actually <laughs> is not a Hoffberg fan. He's trying, trying to drive the price down okay. so that he can bet another long shot. I haven't figured out who the other wise guy mm. horse is uh, at this okay. point. I do have another long shot up my sleeve. I figured. Yeah. I figured. So um, I think the one horse we all mentioned at some point, except maybe you, you didn't say Mendelssohn, did you? Mm-hmm. I, Mendelssohn's my top choice. Um, I was fortunate enough to go to Dubai this year for the first time. And when you see a horse win by 18 and three quarter lengths in front of your eyes, it's something special. And so, um, you know, I was convinced going in, despite all the, oh, you know, can he, can, can he transfer to dirt? How is he going to do this and that? I was confident going in. I mean, it, it, we've heard it over and over again. Have to be holder, have to into mischief. Um, I don't have any, you know, questions about dirt. I don't have any questions about um, you know, distance. My only question would be. The question that other people brought up is, that, you know, who was in that race? So I think we're going to get a sense for who was in that race when we see Raya run on Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked her going into that race as well, so um, I think she's the real deal. So we'll see what happens. But Mendelssohn would be my top choice. Good magic. I've been on that train for a long time. So maybe a little bit even sentimentally, um, I'm, I'm still very much on the good magic train. You know, I, I liked, you know, the, you know, first race back, and, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you know what, this is, this horse isn't the same horse as last year. We, you know, we, you know, what are we going to expect moving forward? I mean, that's what you want, though, right? I mean, and the horse comes back, jumps up a couple of points, and then, you know, if he takes that next step, I think he's right there with the rest of these. He probably, realistically, without naming any any specific type of speed figures, has to jump up about, you know, five to ten points <laughs> um, to, uh, you know, to, to hang with Justify on his best day. But, um, you know, I, I think it can happen. I, you know, he's, he's got all the ability in the world from day one. You know, we know that they were high on a million dollar purchase and so forth. And then I'm going to throw in a little bit of a price. Uh, Flame Away uh, is, is a horse that I just, I, I keep trying to get him out of my top three. Um, but as I look at things, and really, even after I looked at the post draw today, 